counting in at five, four, three, two, one. Oh. Hey y'all, it's your girl Mama V here, and this is just me for this video. Um, oh, I forgot to turn this on. And I am going to try to go back to kind of the Sunday dinners I was doing, but it's not Sunday. Um, so again, welcome to my channel again. I'm going to do a quick healthy meal that I usually do after uh, workouts. As y'all know, on the weight loss journey, I did use a little bit of unhealthy things that I don't usually no use on a normal basis. Um, so this is sesame seed sauce. I'm going to put this onto the pan. I'm going to just put a little bit. And I'm going to let that, the sesame seed sauce warm up a little bit. So I'm basically going to make like a healthy version of a stir fry with rice. Um, so instead of rice, I'm doing um, chopped up cauliflower. And I have some Italian hot sausage right here. I just took it out of the casing. Um, and actually, I usually use ground turkey. Um, if I'm eating normally and then I put some eggs on top of it and then some lime for a little bit of flavor and my lovely um, sparkly water so I think this is good enough hopefully it's not super loud I am going to go ahead and toss in my spicy Italian sausage is going well I am going to cook a little bit and just kind of give an update I haven't done like a mukbang last video was about um, squeeze juicing um, so yeah I would highly recommend the squeeze juice I would highly recommend also to go watch the video and I'm going to let this cook for a minute and return once it goes to cooking because I want to Spill the tea of how things have been going for me lately. Alright y'all, so I am back. And um, the sausage, sorry there's like things flying. Um, the sausage is almost cooked and this is where I'm going to add two of my eggs. So I'm going to just pop it right on top of the um the sausage right there just to kind of give y'all a look pop it right on top of the sausage this is like a breakfast dinner kind of thing i like eating this um and then the reason why i like cooking with chopstick is because you can pick up and you can also scramble with it so i'm just gonna actually scramble with it so it can kind of create a scrambled egg effect um, sometimes what I do is I do um, kind of a sunny side up, but I don't cook it all the way. So that way, um, I when I put the egg over the cauliflower, the yolk um, is almost cooked. So the juices flow on top of the hot cauliflower and then it cooks all the way. So yeah, like a quick little stir fry. And then I don't really add much seasoning. You could add some... Um, Cayenne pepper powder is awesome. That really tastes good. Um, everything but bagel seasoning um, and lime, I feel like, especially when you're cooking with vegetables, lime really uh, gives it that taste because it holds the lime because it holds the moisture and it holds lime taste. So what I'm going to do is, ooh, I'm a little messy. So I'm going to just pour the cauliflower over it. So cauliflower, the way I duplicate it and try to make the texture similar to rice, and I've been trying to do this for the longest, is... You actually don't have to cook the cauliflower. It's more of just toasting it and warming it up. Because once you like cook it, it turns into like this mush. And it don't remind you of cauliflower, I mean rice. It reminds you more of like a mashed potato. Um, and so as you guys can see, I'm just toasting it up and kind of mixing up the cauliflower in there. And again, we're not really, we're just toasting the cauliflower. We don't want to cook it too long. I would say no more than five minutes on a medium heat. Yeah, so the egg just scrambles right in there. And then once the cauliflower is a little toasted, um, which is, is a little bit 
toasted. It's kind of warmed up. For the rest of the cooking time, I'm going to put the egg on top of it so the yolk... I'm not going to scramble it this time so the yolk, when I break it, it kind of just runs on the, the heat of the pan and doesn't overcook. That's why I feel like, y'all, when you guys are cooking eggs, um, especially scrambled eggs, you don't want to leave it on the pot you don't want to leave the heat on um until it's all the way cooked because the heat from the scrambled eggs and if you don't di directly take it off of the pot it actually cooks it so it's perfect and not overcooked so yes y'all that is going to be my meal for tonight again if you're trying to do a little bit more low calorie you could just do egg yolk and then you definitely want to do uh turkey it, it, ground turkey instead of the spicy italian I'm going to let it cook for a minute, grab my hot sauce, and we will talk about updates. Alright y'all, this is almost done cooking. To kind of show you guys without burning myself. It doesn't look that appetizing, it is to me. It's quick, it gets me through the night after the workout and all that. Um, but yes. And so I'm gonna let that cook for a little bit while I eat and I start my story. And yeah, everything has been going good. It's been crazy in terms of work life and all that. But basically what I wanted to talk about a little bit about today was when someone tells you no. In terms of like education, the um, up higher education realm and like work and all that. And so yeah, so first, a couple of things happened today and I was like, this is perfect YouTube uh, talk. So I have it in there. I'm going to put a little sriracha sauce on top of it. There you go. And I'm going to just turn this on again because the yolk is almost at that perfect stage. And I'm going to just let the heat take care of the rest since I am not going to um, take it off the heat you know but i will unplug it just for safety reasons <clears throat> all right y'all so to kind of start it off was um i was on instagram today social media and there was um tmz had posted about the sky jackson um and the bad baby controversy of like go look it up but basically, Bad Baby had threatened this other girl um, who happens to be African American or, um, you know, appears to be African American. And so I was just scrolling through a comment. Everybody's like, that's a joke. Why would she even take her seriously? Like, why did she don't need to get a, uh, Sky Jackson didn't need to get a restraining order um, because nobody should be scared of Bad Baby. She's not even a rapper, blah, blah, blah. So I had, I had commented because I've been on this whole social justice hype. I mean, I've always been on the so more social justice hype, but I've also been more vocal about it lately. And so, I commented, like, can we not ignore the fact that someone who appears to be a white woman is threatening a black woman online, right? And, like, that's that's a threat within itself, right? That's all I wrote. I was like, can we just not ignore that fact? So, this one girl had commented, so she at me, and she had commented, was like, Sis, I think Sky Jackson would have gotten a restraining order um, regardless if Bad Baby was white. And she was like, this ain't about race. L-M-A-O. So laugh my ass off, right? She's like, it's not about race. So then I commented back. At first I was like, girl, bye. Like, you obviously scrolled through comments and you thought you was going to make me look dumb? No. Um, at least that's how I felt. So I just commented politely back. Um, I was like no one ever said it was just a race thing i just said we just can't ignore the fact about race in this right um she hasn't said anything back and i'm like i'm gonna just you know politely leave it at that and that just like also brought me to a lot of other conclusions so um i was talking to somebody and they were like yeah this person was like oh you know maybe i shouldn't apply for a college i might not be qualified i'm gonna take a bite here mm, this is better than i thought it would turn out i was a little worried because the egg yolk was taking longer to cook on the hot plate i thought it was gonna dry out the sausage but didn't 
has a nice little crisp to it. hungrier than I thought. That egg yolk is like getting there. Let me just cut it in half there. So yeah, that just got me to a lot of thinking. I was talking to this one girl in regards to... So see, this is kind of how I like it. I usually like it a little bit more cooked. But the heat and just let it run over the food and kind of mix it in there because it, see it's not really breaking so the outer part is like cooked so yeah so basically i had commented so yeah so basically i've also been thinking about like a lot of like empowerment and justice and like the world that we want to leave behind so talking to this individual and they're like we're talking about colleges and like other people giving them advice and like somebody had given them advice was like oh that that might not be a, a college that you can get into so that deterred the person from applying or you know the person started psyching themselves out like oh maybe this person's right blah 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 and I just want to say this specifically for women of color or women in general or anybody you know this applies to somebody but I say women of color because I I can identify with my experience and only speak for my experience, right? When someone tells you no, like in terms of higher education or like uh, jobs, tells you no or you can't do it, they don't think you're a good fit, don't internalize that. And internalizing mean like, oh, maybe, internalizing mean having that self thought like saying maybe they're right and oh, maybe I, I can't do it. Especially when it comes to higher education. As my experience being the first gens, first person in, in my family to graduate from a four year, not first person, but first person, uh, the generation, right? My sister also graduated um, and got her master's too. But as a woman of color going through the education system, you're going to hear a lot of no's. You're going to hear a lot of I can't do it. You're going to feel a lot of stereotypes being placed on you. And you're going to be confused if you don't have the academic background of of racism of imposter syndrome of what happens in higher education like yeah you're supposed to get a higher education but there are still structures of racism you know that exist in institutions and stuff that haven't been eradicated yet so you start thinking to yourself and you start internalizing things like am i not good enough no that is not correct like you're not perfect, don't get me wrong, and you can always be a better person, and you should always be open to feedback. Like, that that's the thing. Leave your ego at the door. You're open, always open to feedback. But when someone tells you no and you can do it, you just work harder to prove that you can do it and that you will do it. Don't let anyone deter you from being the best you, right? Like, I could only imagine where I would be if I listened to a lot of the no's or if I listened to a lot of the stereotypes and the stigmas uh you know going into the higher education world and and getting like you know a, a desk job like a you know a white collar job and and not being in like the stereotypical um uh, fields that you know Tongans are and the 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 that is not to say that the stereotypical fields in are bad no like this economy works because everybody puts in the work right but don't limit yourself right if if you feel and you know that you can push yourself to do better like if I heard no's all the time at college or if I felt like I couldn't do it or like people had doubted me like even professors if professors even doubted my ability then like that made me work harder and it's like my sister gave me good advice if someone don't let you through the front door you find a back window you find a back door to get to your goal and and that really that really stuck with me because again as a woman of color you're gonna feel a lot of these things going into a lot of a, a, arenas um that you are not highly represented in and i and i think that's like very important and i always tell like the younger folks like 
it's real. There's academic studies about the imposter syndrome of why you don't feel like you belong and how that's not your fault, right? Like, again, people want to say, oh, it's not always a race thing. And I agree, it may not always be a race thing, but when there are people who identify, you know, with different ethnicities um, or identify as white, it's going to be a race thing. Until we, like get rid of the prejudice and everything it's like a multi-level of issues right and and so yeah anyways i was just aside from the instagram comment you know i was just telling this girl like you can do it if you feel like you can do it you try it and the worst that can happen is that you fail or somebody tells you no but you learn from those experiences and you keep on going because girl i have boys who are watching my videos I wouldn't be anywhere like if you if people look at me like this is obviously my work clothes I'm a normal wear like sweats a t-shirt like workout clothes like that's what I wear on the weekend I wear the Adidas or Jordans or you know whatever I'm wearing right typical typical you know like typical dressing you wouldn't see all the things that I've done, right? And this is not to toot my own horn, but this is to say that don't let other people's perceptions affect how you move in the world, right? I went to college. I went to a highly competitive high school who didn't have any other Polynesians in my grade level, and I was the first Polynesian to enter after four years. Second, I went to a private college, primarily on scholarship, Still had to take out loans. I double majored at that private college because I was like, if you go take my money, I'm gonna get two double, two expertise out of this, right? And I went into economics, um, and you know, talking about policy and all that. And like, I didn't see a lot of brown folks and, and women, and, and, um, a lot of brown folks and women until I went to you know the college that I went to, and like, you know, dealing with numbers and stuff is like. Not something I know a lot of people that uh, come from my community do. So to take that, to be in that field, you know, you start experiencing some things. And then going, you know, into the work world and realizing at a college level, they talk about that, right? You got classes like ethnic studies, social justice, um, sociology. You, you may address it in your English classes and all that. You can address it openly on campus, but you know, when you go into the work world, it's different of how they discuss these type of things, right? And um, some workplaces don't discuss it at all. So then how do you do that, right? How do you deal with all that? You learn all this knowledge about oppression and like mar be marginalized and ostracized. But how do you deal with that in the big world? So that's a lot, of, that's a lot to work with. That egg yolk is adding the moisture I need. So all I'm trying to say is, y'all, <clears throat> be your best self. Reach your highest potential. Don't let anybody tell you no. Because if I allow people to tell me no and I listen to them, People tell me no all the time, obviously, right? But if I listened to that, I wouldn't be where I would be. Like, I, and I'm not even trying to to my own horn, but it's like a, a point of being proud of myself is that, like, I have a degree. I had, like, I went to college right after, and, and you don't have to be your best self and go to college. Like, that's fine, but be your best self in whatever you are doing, right? And like having my own place by the time I graduated college, you know, and then, you know, now looking at being able to, you know, buy a home, like, and I haven't even reached my 30s yet. Like, those are big accomplishments that seem so far-fetched to me when I was younger. And I didn't come from a privileged background. Like, I came from a low-income community. I, myself, was low-income. Like, my brain was going to get me 
to college because that's how I was going to afford college. People can make it into college, but affording it is also a different level, right? And so, yeah, y'all be positive, especially now that college um, enrollment's coming around and you're going to college campuses. Y'all be positive. Y'all can do it. You guys will be warriors out there and make the world a better place for the rest of us, y'all. Because me, I'm getting tired. Of old folks getting tired. Um, so that's my little tidbit of mukbang slash cooking. I hope y'all have a blessed week. Again, stay blessed. Keep on continue to spread the love and not the hate. And let's just make it a better place. Peace, y'all.